everybody. Okay, so we are here at this grand entrance to Aaron Johnson Antiques. Give us a comment if you're an antiques collector. I know we can all appreciate them. This is such a cool place. You're going to love it. Aaron's in there somewhere. Okay, let's, well, I don't see a doorbell, but I think, I think he knows we're here. Ah, oh, there he is. Oh, good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Hi, Greg. Aaron. Good morning. Hi. Come on in, everybody. Can we, may we come in? Oh, please, oh. of course. So we're here with the virtual doll convention and thank you so much for bringing us here to have a tour of your wonderful place Aaron let's chat for a second let's get in so come over here sure so um, Aaron you are here you're about two two and a half miles um, from my shop and we're, yes. we're here in Denver yep. and what do you specialize in <laughs> um, well my employees tell me it's anything that's very big and heavy but um, we do everything, anything that I think is interesting. And that's the good and the bad part because I love things like this lady here that she weighs about two tons. And then I like wonderful little Tiffany glass and all of this very ethereal kind of wonderful fragile things as well. So wander through with us and see somebody's idea of what the world is if you bring it all home with you when you travel. I love that. I love that. So we are, we're going to wander through together on our virtual tour here of Aaron Johnson Antiques. And I'm, we're going to stand on either side of the camera and we have the wonderful privilege of the shop is to ourselves. So we really get to go crazy. But first, Aaron, can, can we chat about this two-ton woman right here? <laughs> She's wonderful. Well, she's she's from around the turn of the century, and um, you kind of get a little bit of the Art Nouveau sensibility with her. And um, she was uh, crafted out of one block of marble. Um, and of course, getting my I can't remember her her artist name at this moment. Of course. Um, but he was responsible for a lot of the carvings around, I believe, one of the early 1900s ex exhibitions in San Francisco. Um, now, she has been outside in the weather. She can't go outside anymore in Colorado because of our freeze and thaw uh, would cause all the marble to chip away. So she's going to live indoors somewhere. Well, she's wonderful. How do you ship her? <laughs> Um, it's actually not that hard okay. with big equipment. We have a forklift, which you'll see why, and um, we build our own crates and we ship everything all around the world. Yeah, it, what they do here is absolutely incredible and it is such a treat to see this. Anything, of course, that you see in our tour and in our video, you can buy. It's all, most of it's all on your website. Everything is on our website and we, um, curate the website basically daily as things come in and as things sell. So it's very up to date. Yeah, he has a full-time web lady and she just does a great job. Just just browsing the website is so much fun. This this bronze piece right here, it, it says bulletin at the top. Was this from a newsroom? No, it's actually from an old uh, Philadelphia, um, cor uh, not courthouse, uh, post office. Again, it weighs over 800 pounds. It's solid bronze, has a plate glass window. And this was, oh, in the early days of post offices where you would have um, the bulletins of the three most wanted. You'd have whatever stamp just came out, um, where the voting was, everything was. This is the, uh, the meeting house media of its day. Gosh, I think I, I almost think I need this then. Yeah. I need this. Oh, this is I can put most wanted this, dolls, this. what's what's coming up at the virtual. It's yeah. 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 All right, well, maybe we could do a little trading <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you ever need any uh, any dolls. All right, let's meander this way, everybody. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, I just found a bed for Remy. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think they would both fit in there. I think they would. This, this is incredible. It's, um, this is a piece from one of the Maharajas in India. This is the family crest, the two fish, and um, made during the time of the English 
uh, rule of uh, most of India. Uh, it's hammered copper, um, probably was gold or silver plated or painted uh, originally, but it is quite something. We're not exactly sure what it was, but now it's a giant dog bed. <laughs> For very, very exclusive dogs. <laughs> well, that's mine count, so that's yes. good. All right. Oh, this is just marvelous. Well, you'll see, like, up here is oh, a chandelier that. from an old theater. It's carved out of wood, and it was gold leaf to make it look like solid gold or bronze. And next to it is a Copenhagen streetlight. So I do like design and mid-century things when they're interesting and unusual and kind of rare. So there's a little bit, there's an Orifor's uh, chandelier here, it's Art Deco. Um, right below it is a 17th century English oak table, which is really big. It's like one of the biggest ones I've had that was actually a drop leaf. Next to it is a desk uh, designed by Corbusier for uh, one of the schools in Chandigarh, India. This one right here? Yes. And that's wow. a great date's about 1948 and is made of teak. I love how you have 17th century next to 1950s. Yes. Does it, can it all kind of? Well, to me, everything of good quality uh, can fit together in the same room. I'm, I'm not one for having everything be of one period or one style. I, as you as you will see, <laughs> I mix everything. I I have no. Well, we love that. I have no uh, compunction to try and make a period room. It's but we love that as doll collectors. We love that because we love all dolls. Yeah. Seventeenth <laughs> <laughs> century to mm, hot off the press. So. I, in all these estates, all my years, I found very few dolls because I think you guys were there first. Oh, we were. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We were. We 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 get in there. Okay, I love this. Um, this pewter, uh, the, the pewter in the cabinet's wonderful, but I want everybody to see the, the inside. Look at this wonderful angel in the gold gilt. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, it's English, and it was originally built into a room. Uh, it wasn't a freestanding piece of furniture, uh, and it's unusual because it's made either out of cherry wood or walnut, both of which were very rare in England at the time. Um, and it is early to middle 18th century. The paint on the inside is later, but it looks very much like what it would have looked like at the time. And I can't open the door because we've got a desk in the way, but it's, it's, the I patina this. on this is original, and that's one of my favorite things, is something that has survived the centuries and still has a beauty to it without fussing and refinishing and doing all of that. I'm going to... Is this George the Second? George Second, George Third. I'm just. Yep. I, I, don't, I didn't really know. I saw the tag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just taking a wild yes. guess. Oh, it's it's awesome. Another one of the things that Aaron has and always has is is great pieces of art. You work with a lot of hotels that buy the art, especially Colorado hotels. What are some of the hotels that you have worked with over the years? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, the Oxford Hotel in Denver many yeah. years ago when it was first rebuilt. Um, Sonnenalp up Son in and Vail. Yeah. And a lot of interior designers, excuse me, and we don't really know where things end up because a designer will come and buy things. We sell it to the designer, and two years later, we'll see it in Architectural Digest in the <laughs> background of someone's home in Hollywood. Yeah. It's really kind of fun. It is really fun. So in here, Erin, you you do a lot of vignettes, which I love, and I have benefited from because Erin decorated our bear den. He has decorated our gingerbread house. Obviously, he's a great decorator. This Egyptian, come on over here, Erin, because I have to. You have to tell okay. us about this wonderful Egyptian style um, yes. furnace, not furnace, fireplace. Fireplace. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, we call it a surround rather than a mantle because it has no shelf. But it is made out of clay and glazed. Uh, it's made in, I believe it was Belgium. And it's really right around the time of Tutankhamun um, when King Tut was discovered. 
anything remotely Egyptian all of a sudden was in fashion. Although these kind of things were in fashion a hundred years before that in the 1820s. So it's hard to know if they were kind of copying the 1820s version or the 1920s version, but it's made around 1920. I love it. And it's mixed. These are Italian. These are hammered out of wrought iron. The candlesticks are 300 some years old, as are these columns. Look at these columns, everybody. They're 1700s. I just get up close so you can see the weathered paint and the layers. This is remarkable. Well, this it adds so much of, texture. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that to me is a piece of artwork rather than a column at this point. It's, it's kind of, it was used as a column at one point. But now um, a lot of wood in Europe is prone to woodworm, which is um, kind of a nasty sounding thing, but it does, the, the little guys eat the moist wood. When things come to Colorado, uh, we have less than 10% humidity. And basically, if it's been here very long, it all dries out. So we never have to worry about that because they simply can't survive without the moisture. Um, yeah. The so I don't. I, I will have things with what, on certain areas of the world, you, you just don't get because um, you're afraid you might bring some creatures home with you. It happens. It happens, but um, I, I find that kind of charming in a, in a way as well. Okay, everybody, you're going to have to come over here into this other vignette right here. First of all, I have always just so admired this wonderful, this wonderful just, couch. We just sold it. You did? Yep. Yeah, staying in Denver. Oh, Rising my goodness. Out. It is sold. Isn't it marvelous? It's uh, just, Art Nouveau. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Styled after French Art Nouveau. Come in close so they, can, so they can hear and you. It, it styled after French Art Nouveau, but it was made in America, which is very, very rare. We just did not get into it very much. Let's chat about a couple other things in this vignette right here. Well, I, it's hard to know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> so a big, giant Japanese plate that we call a charger. And that is um, 19th century, but wonderful, beautiful, kind of delicate and pastel almost colors. And Italian, French art and Italian sconces and frame and Danish or Swedish um, brass wall sconces with the hearts up on top, oh, as are the stars up above the painting. So I, I mix every country and kind of everything. As we navigate over everybody, I want you to look at the ceiling and see the chandelier <laughs> right above us. Yes, that this is, a, is. This is a marvel. It came from France. It's hard to know if it's French or Italian, actually. Uh, the cage, the, the frame of it is hand-forged iron. And this actually is, I'm thinking, 18th century, which is very unusual. Um, usually you see things in the 1920s that look like this. They've copied that. But this being hand-forged, and then it has some repairs to it that seem later. So. I'm guessing it's pretty early. And then all of this wonderful Venetian blown glass fruit on the chandelier is what gives it color. And that's what makes it sparkle. Although in this place, after hanging up there about a year, it starts to look kind of dusty. It still just looks But marvelous. you can still get the idea. Isn't this fun, everyone? This is an old Chicago light off of a dock. We got a lot of light coming in on it, yes. so we're going to try and try so and see it. This guy is cast out of aluminum right around the turn of the century when aluminum was still a very unusual and expensive metal. All right, let's let's shimmy on down the line. This yes, is kind of this is. I hope you were enjoying that this antiques excursion out there because this is just such a treat. Look that, at this wonderful. That is a giant piece of hand-coiled, handmade pottery that is from the Shipibo people uh, in the, the jungle part of Peru. And these things, these 
I have three of them that came from a local collector, and they're huge. I have no idea how they made it all the way up here from Peru, but, but they're amazing. And kind of wonderful primitiveness, and yet still almost very contemporary. I've had a number of these before, but they were kind of just mixing bowl kind of size. This thing is big. Now, you said you didn't decorate for Christmas. <laughs> we just happened to have these from an estate that we got in July. <laughs> and since you were coming, I put them out. There we go. See? We have <laughs> some fun little stuff right there. Yes, there's no telling what shows up here. I love a great room divider. This, this one is just... Yep, that we just sold as well. Oh, dang it. Well, that's okay. It takes the pressure off of all of us, but I want you guys to come in and just, just look at the uh, uh, Marie Antoinette almost style. It's very much like that. Yeah. It's, just, it's just gorgeous. Just look at the bows and just everything. And, I, and look at the size. Room dividers are usually about this tall. Yes. And this one is, what, 10 feet tall? It's wonderful. Yeah, it's right about 8 feet. Yeah, which is big. Yeah, it's marvelous. All right. Let's see if we can get some some on on her. She's yeah. She's now she's actually This one's travel American. size. This is this travel, travel size. Travel size. <laughs> yeah, this one's only about eight hundred pounds, and we, she has no artist signature, so we don't know who. Um, now there is somewhere I found a document or a picture of one of the states in New England that shows a, a Lady of Liberty statue that looks very much like this. It could be could be uh, one of the New England artists at the uh, late 19th century carved it. And as you look up, everybody, just keep, keep on looking up at this marvelous column. Look at that. Yeah, that's a Corinthian. I love the weathered green. Corinthian style column that came out of India. Ooh. And all the, all the uh, European cultures that went and settled in India brought their styles with them and you'll see Corinthian temples brought by the kind of the English, the Portuguese, French, Dutch, everybody brought their styles with them. But it's wonderful, it's solid teak and uh, that's about nine, ten feet tall. Oh, I keep and saying everything's two. ten feet tall. Those, that really is. <laughs> this yeah. really is, okay. Well, it feels ten feet tall in here. This painting so. is pretty special. On the back it has uh, a burned-in stamp from one of the royal palaces uh, in, I believe, Co in, uh, Denmark. That's beautiful. It's funny. I used to be able to. Oh, you're doing great. No, remember. You're I doing, couldn't quite remember great. all of these. <laughs> so as we navigate around, everybody, Aaron will point out a couple of things that he really loves. But I want you to just take it in and just see the wonderful variety. And the, and the massive, it is such a, and you, you are doing such a service to Aaron because a lot of, uh, I don't know any other dealers that can handle things like this. And if nobody takes care of them and helps place them, where do they go? So it's, thank you for saving these things and bringing them to the market. Yes. Well, for that's, us. That's, that's kind of where I started in high school. High school art class, my art teacher introduced me to an antique store and it was full of all the remains of the day. It was just pieces and parts of old mansions from Denver that, that were being torn down. And I walked in and I immediately knew I was home. I just, I, I still remember it with chills because it was so life altering to walk in and, and see everything that you wanted to, to know about. I love that. I love that. So when you when you come here, you can you can literally get something of everything because when you look around, there's just wonderful little sconces and all kinds of fun small things. But I'm I'm really all about the big things. Let's let's get a, a look from this angle. Another thing that Aaron has that's just wonderful is lighting. Aaron, you personally love. Tiffany art glass and, and art glass in general and lighting. 
What is it, what is it about lighting for you? I, that's a tough one to say, but I think the lighting is what makes a room. And it, like a, a great chandelier in a small room is like a great piece of jewelry in the house. You know, it, it, it just enhances everything that is around it. And so much uh, contemporary lighting is really just lighting. It doesn't have much visual impact or quality that I think in the way of design. Some of it is interesting in the fact that it's very simple, but for me, more is more. More is more. Well, and the, the eye is drawn to sparkle, and yes. lighting adds sparkle, especially lighting with glass. It's just, oh, it's gorgeous. Well, this one, I love this. This is a, a French Art Nouveau hall stand. Uh, it's inlaid, various inlaid woods. It's not signed, but Galet and Majorel, and several different makers, all made things like this, but um, the more you study, the more you find out that a lot of people did really wonderful work, but just never kind of got their name known. This cupboard is wonderful. I could see it just full of antique dolls, but <laughs> right now it's full of um, uh, plates. But it, was this installed in, into a house yes. as well? Yeah, this was um, an American cupboard um, in the 1700s, we have the doors. Someone had taken the doors off, but when they installed it in the last house, they just took the doors and put them behind it, inside the wall, so rather than pitching the doors. So we have the doors that go with it. Um, but it's, it's been stripped and is left raw, which actually I kind of like. Um, and these sometimes were just cupboards that were for holding things. And later on in houses, someone would cut some of these designs to make them more of a display piece. So it's hard to know exactly when this interior uh, shaping of the shelves was done, but it's been a long time because it had cup hooks at one point. And this is fun, which I didn't notice for a year. It has the pull-out slide so you could take things off and set them down and then carry them to the table. Oh, perfect for dressing dolls, yeah. Oh, yes, okay. perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So I would love to just meander through and see some of the wonderful accessories that you have. He has a wonderful amount of small art glass and, and silver. So on this side is the art glass case, and they're all mostly American makers, um, a little bit of European, but mostly American with Tiffany being something that I like, so I tend towards Tiffany when I can find it. But we have the Quizelle, the Steuben, Luster Art, all the, all the different makers in America. And I like, again, because I like lighting, I tend to get lampshades because you get to see the artistry of the glass making but they also light up where a vase just kind of sits there these you get to light up and see a whole different uh, look of the glass itself just totally amazing yep I know everyone out there is just having such a great time and it's wonderful to get out of our house and just virtually visit this incredible place. All right. I feel like I just, I might as well be in it's, it's a, the London <laughs> Museum. I mean, it's yeah. just, this is wonderful. Well, the silver here is English and American primarily. Um, these pieces are Indian and they're actually the, the feet that go to a piece of furniture. They're teak wood and then covered with sheet silver and hammered and all of that. There's a little bit of uh, German, Spanish, silver, Danish. Um, yeah, it's, they're actually, now that I look at it, they're from, it's from everywhere. <laughs> it's from everywhere, yeah. Like, like everything else here. Let's, let's talk about stained glass for a minute. What do you love about stained glass? Well, the same thing. 
it it has two moods or many moods depending on the light source coming through it so you have the design element but you also have the um, individual each little piece of glass if you look at it ha has its own kind of I don't want to say story but it's like it every piece is unique in stained glass yeah it really is let's go and see you guys can see that now this isn't a terribly old window but it was very nice and uh, we just sold this <laughs> good <laughs> yes that's good they're waiting for the house to get ready now I know your one of your favorite museums is of course the Tiffany Museum in in Florida in yes. Winter Park Florida mm hmm yeah what, what is one of your favorite pieces from that museum oh my gosh the, the windows and a lot of the things in the Morse Museum there are from Tiffany's house uh, which I mean you don't get much better provenance than coming right. out of Tiffany's house and and there it's all astoundingly wonderful I have I have just a few pieces that are close to that none of them are really that quality but they're things that are unusual the big shade up on the top shelf is one of the early pieces of Tiffany it's very big and very kind of wacky swirly things going on that would have been a kerosene lampshade I actually have the whole lamp but I don't have it together because it's a little tippy it, it, it elicits a, a very happy feeling, um, the, the glass, and, and it's a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that somebody made it with their imagination in their hands. And this case has a mixture, Japanese cloisonne, uh, English, a lot of English pottery and porcelain from the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, and it's, it's kind of just mixed together, but I, I kind of go for color and shape when I do these cases. Even though this is technically a warehouse, I still like it to look interesting. Uh, it keeps me interested as well as people who do come here. And Eric, behind you, that case is mostly Chinese porcelain from a local estate, 18th century, as well as some shipwreck pieces that came up on one of the famous shipwrecks. They have the tag on them from Christie's showing that they were from that shipwreck. So I love the romance of history. Absolutely, and just, you know, you, you have to respect these items because they're, they made it, they're here. Yes, so you have this Jugendstil, which is uh, Art Nouveau uh, in Europe, probably Germany. These are Portuguese Goa. Um, the painting is 17th century Dutch. The fireplace is French. Edgar Britton was a Colorado artist in the 1950s. Nice early English grandfather clock. So once again, just mix it up. Let's get a peek at this gallery wall right here. Maybe, I don't know, Eric, you'll, you, maybe you can get it as we go up the stairs, but this I, I love a great gallery wall, and to do it right here on the stairway is wonderful. Now, is the is the upstairs? Can we go off roading? Oh, oh yes, go off roading. Okay, so Aaron, this you go is, up first. We'll follow him up. We're going to go off roading, everybody. And this is very warehousey, even more. Things stacked two, three, four high up here. And since it is upstairs, there's no elevator. This has to be something that two people or less can carry. This is the best. <laughs> we're just, we're like, it's, it's rare that I don't, I can't think of something to say, but I mean, <laughs> this is, this is cool. This is so cool. We'll go wander back that way. There's, there are some more Corbusier pieces from Chandigarh, India, 1940s and 50s. Um, there are pieces, quite, there's some furniture from India that you would swear was English or something like that. Look at that chair, look at the embroidery on that. 
and these wonderful Swedish chairs. You, you loaned one to me for my Christmas display, and it's so perfect. Well, that's, that's as about as close to Santa as you can get. Look at how wonderful these chairs are, everybody. Come in and... That was an early collection of mine, was well, 17th and 18th century chairs from around the world. And I just look at them again as sculpture. Uh, some of them sit really well, some of them really do not sit well, but they're great looking. <laughs> so oh. I have them anyway. They're, they're amazing. But we mix industrial lighting with, which is very contemporary use. These are mostly old ship's lights and things like that. And um, we had lots more, but they, we've kind of sold down, so we still have some interesting ones. But there's, yeah, they're just a mixture of all styles here. Ooh, look at the bamboo ones. Yeah, no, those are Chinese, and they are um, basically. To, to this area, uh, real unusual. We don't see a lot of bamboo furniture here. You see it mostly places like Florida and some place a little more tropical. But the English copied a lot of Chinese furniture. And if you went to 18th century London, you would see chairs like that fresh off the boat from China. And then the local cabinet makers would copy them, make them out of beech wood, and then paint them. Aaron, you have a wonderful staff of a team of people that, that work and do all kinds of stuff every single day. What what is a typical day like, a typical work day like being an in well, an antiques person like you? Um, well, there isn't really a typical day. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, many times we spend uh, the the boys Sergio and Jose, which are they they keep the place running. And they build crates for um, shipping because we have to crate and ship really a lot of things these days. And so they're, they're doing that for part of the day. Then we have to rearrange the store because if you sell something and take it out, then you have to fit everything else around. Uh, Vanessa is doing emails and um, Diane would be doing a listing on the various platforms from uh, Ruby Lane and eBay and Instagram and everything that is everything today. And your main platform is Aaron Johnson Antiques. So yes. that, go there first because that's where that's where things land. That's first. the first, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Everything else, if we have time, it gets there yeah. eventually. But AaronJohnsonAntiques.com. Yeah, that's 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 where and it's just such a beautiful website. So it's it's definitely some something you will want to bookmark and yes. keep referring back to. I'm sure a lot of people stalk you for design inspiration. We do, and we have uh, classes here from a couple of local uh, colleges that do interior design history of furniture. So we walk around and they can see an actual Chippendale chair or an actual Swedish chair or something like that. And that's really fun to get to actually touch things and, and that, that tells you a lot as you're studying when you can actually feel and touch and lift things. That's how you Museums learn. tend to frown on that. Yeah. I find out. You find out. <laughs> so when you were when you were young, did you how did you learn? Well, we passed all the books downstairs. I had about three thousand reference books and while I hadn't read cover to cover all of them, I had certainly used all of them over the years. And I would find something that interested me and then buy every book I could find even remotely connected to it. And the good and the bad is that when you look up chairs, you start finding out why the, the leg of the chair looks like the leg of the table. And then you have to start looking at tables. And then that turns into looking at architecture. And then it turns into art. And pretty soon you're in the antique business. Yeah. Well, being in the antique business is cool. <laughs> it's cool. This is such a cool career, Aaron, and what you're doing every day. And I can just, I have a little, I know a little from, from my side of it, but what a way to travel. You must learn something almost every day. 
Well, yes. If you if you let yourself have curiosity, any time of life, you you can't help but learn something, and that's what that's the only thing that keeps me going is to find something out that I didn't know, and then. The very unusual thing, I think, is when I would get a book and read it, the next time I went out shopping, I would find something out of the book, and it happened repeatedly. And had I not read the book, I wouldn't have known what it was, and I would have walked past it. But as it is, you you learn and your eye gets trained, and you walk into a store, and in the back of the store on top of something, from the front door you go, oh, I want to look at that. And it it just, um, things just pop out at you without you even trying after a while. So I, I totally recommend books. The internet is great for superficial learning, but books are what tell you who did it and why they did it and what tools they used and what wood and where did the wood come from and all of that. Yeah, oh, I love that. It's such, it's such great inspiration, and as antique lovers and collectors, we can certainly appreciate what it takes to learn about all of these things and to uh, come and explore a wonderful place like this. I cannot thank Aaron Johnson enough for his generosity in helping us with all of our doll stuff and bringing, uh, opening up his wonderful place for us today. We're going to, we're going to explore some more, but I hope you just are enjoying this as much as I am because what a treat. All right, let's, Eric, you, you get to go first and we're just going to explore some more of these wonderful aisle ways. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I love, Don't. Looking, <laughs> I love looking down and seeing how things look from a different vis uh, vista. Yeah, don't look down. That's that. Okay. That looks good. That's good. You have to look at this. This is one of my favorite things, and it's a food storage cupboard from the Kutch area of India. And it's made by the women. It's paper mache because wood is incredibly scarce in this. It's a desert region. And it has a little door. And inside this, um, it's a little hard to see, but down inside there are depressions where the clay pots with rounded bottoms would sit into the, into the piece. And there's a book again, my books, um, that this talks about the people and where it's from. And it's, it's really fascinating how these uh, cultures lived. And actually, to me, the exciting and interesting thing is, to me, that looks like an 1880s aesthetic movement stained glass window. You'd see the, almost that exact design in American stained glass windows of that time period. And it's funny how all these cultures all designed things so similarly. But this with six legs reminds me of something that you'd see in an early Star Trek episode. Oh, you're, everybody, it is, it is. You would think it would be very like made out of. Looks like it's made out of some Stone or something. or something, yeah, but, but no, it's, it's, that's paper mache. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love, is this leg wonky on purpose? Yes, it probably fit in a particular spot in a particular house that maybe the wall curved in right there. So they just made it to, to they fit. They made it to fit. This tabletop is made out of slices of the stems of tree branches. That's incredible. That's so inventive. Yeah. And is this marquetry? Yes. Yeah. What's the difference between marquetry and parquetry? Parquetry, or, sorry, I have to get myself, this is parquetry. Parquetry. It's like parquet floors, which they're like basically blocks and rectangles. Marquetry would be like galet with all the curves mm. and all the little things. Okay. So marquetry can be um, floral. 
Part of the tree is more would be more geometric. geometric. Okay. Yeah. All the things we've always wanted to know, we can unlock the answers here. All right, everybody, get a pan. Look at it from this, this angle. Is, this is, this my, is the angle. This is my favorite shot in the store. It's looking this way. Aaron Johnson, your store is a triumph. Thank this, you. This was, this was such an experience. We have only barely scratched the surface of the wonderful things in Thank here. You. Yep. What would you like to say to somebody that, that might be watching out there that now sees this and might want to come visit? Oh, definitely <laughs> come visit. We're, we're the, the warehouse is open from 10 to 5, Tuesday through Saturday. Normally we wear masks, but we're trying to stay apart, and, and um, it's a little hard to talk on camera. But um, even in this time, you can look at the website and see pictures, and if there's something that you want to see the bottom of or whatever, just let us know. We would send you pictures, and um, it's kind of as good as we can all get this day. But it's good armchair traveling, looking at websites and looking at all these things. So Yeah, well, he... he he is shy on camera, but I think he did a marvelous <laughs> job. I think he did such a great job. So if you if you are wanting to visit, visit online because that, that's you. You really work in your online presence. Yes. A lot. Yes. And anything is shippable. And Aaron can also consult with you on what to do. Yes, we we do a lot of that as well, and we work with architects, designers, and homeowners and collectors. And it's great fun. Yeah, because if you see something, I, I see a lot of things in here I love, but I don't exactly know where to put it or how to use it. And, and you can help because sometimes I feel like it can be a little overwhelming. Yes. And you can you can take that out and well, make it not so scary. Yes, and it's it, it many times it is easier if it isn't your room to walk in and go, oh, well, here's what you need. Because you, you can take your personality out of it, but you can see the other person's personality and you can see what they're after, and maybe everything in the room should stay in the room and just be in a different spot, and maybe part in the living room should be in the other room, and I mean, you just, as you walk through, you kind of get a feel for where things ought to be, having to do with light and the shape of the wall and all of this. So it's great fun. I, I, I get a kick out of it, and love talking antiques with people, so. So contrary to what sometimes they say in pop culture or whatever, antiques, first of all, are so hot. They are so cool. This, it's a happening industry. And if it, I know there's a lot of people out there, especially young people that might be in their teens and early 20s that are so interested. They don't know where to start. Aaron, can you think of one of the things that you might have told you you hear now what you might have told yourself when you were 19 or 20 oh. when you were in that car didn't know how you were going to pay for gas going to <laughs> from one flea market to the that's, next that's exactly me yeah <laughs> yeah that is exactly well, me. what would you have said to yourself uh, just basically um, a long time ago someone told me knowledge is power and that's the one thing that I've always tried to is is just keep learning and pick one thing, learn as much as you can about it, and kind of become an expert to yourself with being able to recognize things or recognize a style or whatever. And then expand from that and expand from that. And it, it happens pretty quick once you get going. But the, the, the most important thing is have some imagination and walk into a, a, a store or something and don't turn up your nose at anything. Look at everything, because you don't know what 
wonderful thing you're going to discover that you didn't even know existed. Yeah, and I really love, and I just love this industry, and I think it's really important to remind people that you didn't start out like this. No. <laughs> I started out in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, which is a very middle-class bedroom community of Denver, and there's no public sculptures. There was nothing like that. And that's why that walking into that antique store with the uh, art teacher um, just blew my mind to, to open my mind to what things were actually out there because I had no idea. He didn't grow up in a house that looked like this, so this goes to show. <laughs> this goes to show that if you have a passion, you don't have to have all the pieces of the puzzle, you can just start. Yeah, and you just start wherever you are with whatever you have. And then, no, the other thing is don't be afraid to trade up. If you find something, you love it, but you find something that is better, that serves the same purpose, sometimes you have to let those pieces go to, to grow your collection or to grow your knowledge. I still have a few pieces of the earliest things that I bought that I've saved only because I love the memory of how I found them. Um, and they're not worth that much, but they're some of my most meaningful pieces. But then I've sold a lot of wonderful pieces, a few that I wish I hadn't, but most of it is just something you do in order to grow. Yeah. Because we, we don't all have a unlimited checkbook to be able to just dive in um, and just get whatever you want. And I think many times the fact that you can't get what you want at the moment you want it really helps you learn a lot because then you have that passion to find out and to try and find it. And that's to me like 80% of the fun. Right, working for it and going for it, yeah. So it's important if you're watching this you know, don't compare your point, your, your starting point to somebody's ending point. I, I try to remind myself that yeah. and, and instill that a lot to just even in the doll industry so that people know you can start wherever you are mm -hmm. and build on it with books from the library yeah. and looking online and going to flea markets. And, and talking to dealers. Mm -hmm. um, today, the one thing that I miss the most is having customers come in and say, why do you think that chest of drawers is from England or France or wherever? And then you both sit there and look at the parts and pieces and look at how it's made and the wood and all of this stuff and kind of discover it together. And I've, I've looked at things when somebody else asks a question and realized that I always thought it was something and in fact it probably isn't. And that's that is good too. Yeah. We, I mean, we, yeah. we all learn. I, I, well, actually, you don't learn so much by success as you do failure. So, such a I've, big one. I have spent money on some things that I would for sure thought I was really smart and got the deal. And in fact, they were just nice examples, but they weren't the real thing. And um, you sure learn from that. When you're when you hit it hurts when you hit your pocketbook, right? Yes. So that that's really it, that happens to me all the time. It it I tends just don't to, make videos about it. Yeah, it tends to get seared into your brain when it costs you money. Yeah. Yeah. Well you never you never uh, lose. You learn something. Right. That's I that's what I try and remind myself. Yeah. I I didn't lose here, I learned something. Yep. And if you're not learning, you're not growing. So yeah. just Love that. Just keep keep at it, whatever you're doing. Did you hear that, everybody? Keep at it. The famous words of Aaron Johnson. I love to keep at it. Let's all say it together. Are you ready? We're going to say it together. Okay. One, two, three. Keep, keep at it. it. All right. <laughs> this was amazing. We're going to end our video with just some beautiful pictures and a couple more clips of your wonderful store. Did you have fun today? Oh, yes. Yeah. In spite of being nervous, now I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> well, he warms up when, when it comes to talking about antiques. So that's, that's yeah. That's that's the you know like the like the doll that you pull the string. That's what happens. Yeah. Yes. Well, we look forward to coming back for more virtual excursions with you, and learning opportunities.
Thank you so much, Aaron. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.